We are full. Stop coming here. So it's a very familiar battle cries right now in Florida. And they only seem to get louder every year. On a humorous side note, mostly uttered by people that moved here five or ten years ago themselves. However, the fact is people are moving to Florida. It is estimated that over the next 10 to 15 years, we'll have another six million people moving here and some estimates go as high as eight million. In this video, we're going to take a look who is coming, why they're coming, where they're coming from, and what consequences does it have not only for Florida, but especially here locally for the Treasure Coast Vero Beach area. Well, let's start with who is coming. No surprise, traditionally, if, and if you're old enough to remember the Golden Girls, yep, the retirees are coming to live their best life down here in Florida. And that won't stop anytime soon. See, baby boomers right now are the largest uh, demographic group in America. We are. And if you live somewhere in the northeast of America, where do you retire to? Yep, Florida. Obviously, not all of them will retire to the East Coast or to Vero Beach for that matter, but to give you an idea about the magnitude, Orlando, the greater Orlando area, is expecting an influx of almost a million people over the next 10 or 15 years. That's an increase in their population by 20 to 30 percent. Let's just say Orlando is actually very aware of that and and they're really scrambling to put the infrastructure in place. Give you a quick story. I was driving the other day to a small city outside to the south of Orlando. You know, one of those small little towns I remember fondly from 15 years ago. We always used to stop there because they used to have a restaurant that had the best fried catfish in all of Florida. Well, I'm driving through there and I didn't recognize anything anymore. As a matter of fact, I didn't find the restaurant anymore and there didn't seem to be any physical boundary into Orlando anymore. The second group that joining that movement into Florida didn't really exist four or five years ago and really made possible through modern technology and really accelerated over the last two or three years. And those are people that have figured out, hey, we can work from home, no more commute, no more living in a cold climate. Um, I can pro I can combine lifestyle with work. Let's face it, Florida is a pretty easy place to live, from climate to a much more relaxed lifestyle. And interestingly enough, it's not only individuals that are moving. I mean, whole companies are moving down here from smaller companies, but even the big national companies seem to think that they have to have some kind of presence down here and at least move part of their operations into Florida. By the way, I talked to some of these employees of these companies the other days, helping them to relocate. And to a man or a woman, they said they can't believe how easy it is to live in Florida. Number one, the climate, but every single one pointed out that everybody is so friendly here. Now, personally, I wouldn't describe the West Palm Beach atmosphere as super friendly. So I can only imagine what it must feel like from where they're coming from. Brings me to the third group, the one that nobody wants to mention because everybody wants to stay politically correct. So of course I'm going to mention that. People are literally fleeing certain states because like they say, we can't take it anymore. I call them political refugees. Let's just say they're very dissatisfied with certain regulatory decisions that are made in their home state. It's more than just the taxes or regulations or restrictions. It's like they don't recognize the state anymore they grew up in. Let's face it, in America right now, we have two very different philosophies, how much government should get involved in one's life. And Florida is definitely very solid on one side of that spectrum. I am not going to get into a political discourse here, but between the retirees, the lifestyle people, and these political people, they're coming. It's inevitable. What does it mean for Florida? Let's talk about the consequences, good and maybe challenging. Let's start with, let's bring it back to real estate. So the net effect that this huge influx has had on property prices simply means that property prices will continue to rise. I can't help it. It's a simple demand and supply issue. We can't build enough as it is. Now, couple that with the fact that most people, where they come from, their property prices are actually higher than ours. So they have enough financial firepower to come down here and keep that level up 
and are not all that deterred by any kind of economic downturn. And that's the reason why nobody's really forecasting any kind of home value depreciation going forward in Florida. The underlying factors simply don't change. So over the last 30 years, home prices here have steadily climbed, sometimes faster, sometimes slower, but there has been not one five to six year time period where the home value at the end wasn't higher than the previous one. So stop coming here or we're full won't help. It won't stop anything simply because the underlying issues aren't changing. Between the demographic factor moving down here, the lifestyle factor of people actually can work from anywhere now, and then you add the political reasons as well, it's inevitable. Some consequences could be viewed as advantages. So whole new industries for Florida have emerged that now provide a much broader employment base, much more diverse aside the traditional service industry. Improving the infrastructure is actually in full swing here. There are enormous investment being made, but for the time being, it's still lagging the actual population growth. So sometimes the infrastructure is brought to the brink of failure, especially further south in the bigger cities. Um, not so much in Rio Beach, we're kind of adequate, but during season we're kind of getting a glimpse of, okay, we reach the end point here. So let's come back to the area here, Vero Beach, Sebastian, to a certain extent. We're very, very different when it comes to expansion and growth at any cost. Always have been, I am, I am certain much to the chagrin of local businessmen and developers all over Florida. But we're changing, there's no doubt about it. For years I've driven by orange groves and big swaths of land that was just there vacant. And it seems like every week there's a new subdivision going to be built. But it's still very, very constrained if you compare it to places further south like uh, Port St. Lucie, West Palm. And if you go into Fort Lauderdale, Miami it gets completely crazy. And we're not even talking about the West Coast right now. So here locally going forward, I believe our biggest challenge will be to preserve our rather unique feel. We don't really have any amenities for mass appeal, so to speak. We don't have any theme parks. We don't have any sprawling malls. We don't really have um, thousands of high-class restaurants, etc. It's a very, very old Florida lifestyle type thing. Lots of nature, no high rise. We have the Indian River Lagoon, all kinds of water activities. Everything is pretty much geared towards a slower, more contemplative lifestyle. Hence the nickname Zero Beach. Now the term Zero Beach has been used in the past and even nowadays uh, as a derogatory term, basically letting everybody know, hey, there's nothing going on here. But I believe going forward, this may be our real capital, the only lone spot left on the East Coast that hasn't succumbed to the Miamization of Florida. While I still have you, if you have any question about the area, living here, moving here, up the coast, down the coast, uh, in the description below, you will find all kinds of ways to reach out to me. Happy to talk to you. We can chat in detail, tailored to your situation.